It has been eight years since the brutal killing of Mrs. Eunice Olawale, a 42-year-old preacher who was brutally killed in Kubwa, Bwari area of FCT. Eunice Olawale was a mother of seven children, and she was also a deaconess at a popular Pentecostal church in Nigeria, the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And it was part of her usual routine to go into the streets of Kubwa to preach with her megaphone and her Bible. It was said she woke up most times as early as four to get ready to go into the streets of Abuja just to preach the word of God. Many people knew her. She was very popular around Kubwa area and around Abuja. She was like the first voice a lot of people would hear very early in the morning. And personally, when you are used to being in an area where a preacher goes around preaching with megaphone, for a lot of us who grew up in such environments, this was our alarm to know that we have to wake up and get to work. So Eunice Olawale was known. Maybe not personally, but people in Abuja at the time knew her to be the woman who preached in the early hours of the morning. However, it turned out that not many people was happy with her way of life. And on the 9th of July 2016, these people decided to end her life and make sure she never preaches again. The unusual thing about the death of Mrs. Eunice Olawale was the fact that she most likely saw it coming. She knew she was going to be killed. She knew some people were after her. In fact, she tried her best to prevent it. But the thing is, when people have it out for you, they pretty much do. So three weeks before the incident happened, Eunice, on one of her preaching, overheard an imam, a, a, a Muslim cleric, talking to a group of people in their native language about how they do not like her preaching. Now, Yenis Olawale is a Yoruba woman, but growing up in Abuja, it's not unusual to be able to hear the Hausa language. And so when she overheard the conversation, which by the way, we're not sure if she heard it directly, but the sources claim that she heard it directly. It's also possible that someone may have brought it up to her. However, she did overhear or she did hear the story that a group of Muslim leaders were talking about how they did not like the message she usually preached every morning. It is also possible that it wasn't just the message she was preaching, but the fact that she was preaching at all. Obviously, to some people who may not subscribe to her religion or her way of faith, her megaphone and her Bible and her words every morning around five could be interpreted as nuisance or noise. And so, yes, there's a chance that this imam and his group of leaders may have been complaining about the noise aspect of her waking up every morning to preach. Upon hearing this, it was said Eunice Olawale took the information to her husband, Mr. Elijah Olawale. And instantly, Mr. Elijah was like, okay, you have to calm down. If you're hearing this, that means this is not good news. And also put in mind that this is 2016. The tension between the extremist Muslim and Christian in that area of the world was not new. By this time, the Christiania Olu assassin story that we have talked about on this page had already happened. So it is very possible that maybe it was still in the minds of people. And so when Eunice told her husband about what she was hearing about this so-called clerics, he was bothered about it. It's not like she had heard that she was going to be threatened or they would do something about her. She just heard them say they did not like the fact that she was preaching. On a normal day, if someone did not like what you were doing, who cares? But this triggered Elijah, who was concerned, who knew the possible outcome of religious leader as such, say they do not like what you're doing. It's one thing if people on the streets are passing and saying, ah, we don't like what you're doing. It's another thing if a Muslim cleric is saying it. It carries so much weight. And because of that, Elijah told his wife to calm down for a while, to relax, to stop going to preach. And for a week, it was said Eunice stopped preaching in the streets of Abuja. Although sources did say she stopped preaching in the early morning, so there's a chance she may have been doing it maybe later in the day. It's not clear if that is the case, but it could also mean that she stopped preaching for a whole week. Okay, now, put in mind she got the information about the cleric talking about how they don't like her preaching three weeks before the incident. And the second week was when she stopped preaching. So she didn't preach throughout the entire week. So it was the, the third week that she eventually said, you know what, I mean, preaching is part of her lifestyle. It's now who she is. It's now part of her routine. And it would be hard to stop it, honestly. It's not going to be something you can easily give up 
over just being told people do not like you. Maybe if she had been threatened directly, maybe if they had told her we would do this to you, probably she would have stopped a little longer. But when she looked at it, it was just a man saying, I do not like what this woman is doing. And frankly speaking, I can see why Eunice went back to preach because at the time, there wasn't exactly initial threats. It was just a powerful cleric saying he did not like her preaching. Unfortunately, it turned out that the situation was way worse than not liking her preaching. Anytime it goes be by six, she's back. But on Saturday morning, she went out for this thing with her handset and a megaphone. When she resumed preaching, somewhere on the 9th of July 2016, around 5 a.m. her usual time, she picked up her megaphone, went with her Bible, and continued doing the Lord's work as she usually does. Her mobile phone was also with her, and just in time, her preaching began. Now, I don't know where you're watching from, but over here in Nigeria, in some places, 5 a.m. is still pretty much very dark. 6 a.m. is dark. It starts to get really bright by 7, if not. And so, 5 a.m. was still as dark as night. But clearly, people had begun preparing for the day already. It wasn't exactly a, a, a lazy darkness. It was a darkness where cars were still moving, people were setting up their shades, and, you know, people were beginning to go about their day. But what is clear is the fact that it was still dark. Now, sources who were around the area where this woman stood to pray, who were setting up their shade, claimed that they did hear her preach. They were hearing her preaching with a megaphone. They heard her pray. To them, it was normal. To them, it was usual. While they were doing their thing, they were hearing her do her thing. They could not see her because of how pitch dark the entire distance could have been. However, somewhere around 5.30 or towards 6, they heard her scream the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And it did not occur to them because they assumed it's her. She's praying, she's preaching. Maybe if she had shouted help, or maybe if she had shouted something else, it could have maybe probably raised an alarm. But it was said she kept screaming the blood of Jesus. And they assumed that was part of her preaching. They could not see anything. Eventually, a few hours later, or a few minutes later, when the day began to brighten up, they saw this woman laying dead in her pool of blood. It turned out that Mrs. Eunice Olawale had been stabbed brutally on her stomach. And nothing was taken from her. Not her megaphone, not her mobile phone, not her Bible, nothing else. Clearly, whoever came to do it came to just kill her. It wasn't a robbery gone wrong. It wasn't anything else. It was just somebody who wanted to end her life. And that was what they did. And by the time it was 6.30 towards 7 o'clock, this was already daybreak. People were already seeing her. The lady who used to preach in the early hours of the morning has been killed. Instantly, the authorities were called. Her body was removed. By this time, her children, two of her sons were in the football field. Her husband was most likely at home. And this was how the husband and the entire family got to find out about the death of their mother and wife. It's a very sad story. It's a very painful story to revisit. And I do hope it's not something that brings pain because honestly, this is a case that should not be forgotten because up to this very moment, as at the time of making this video, justice has not been served. They were discussing that there's a woman they killed, that woman used to preach in the morning, that they killed the woman, the megaphone, and uh, he was beside her. So when they told me, I said, ah. As mommy come back, I said no. I picked my phone. I did not even know what to call. Later I call a line. They say switch off or not available. So with my short nicker, we stroll down the biggest about two or three hundred meters away from our house. So it first started with her two sons who were said to be playing in the football field when the words were already going around that a woman had been stabbed along the Bwari area and it's not clear the description but it was obvious that they may have said the woman who used to preach. Now this kid heard it and they're like the woman who used to preach. Okay. They ran home and they brought it to their dad to call their mom that 
they are hearing words that a woman who preaches in a Gwari area has been killed in the, in the neighborhood. And that's when the dad was trying to get to the mom. But unfortunately, no response from the phone call. And so he went with his daughter to the site where people have been saying a woman was killed. At the time he got there, her body was not there. It was just blood uh, remnants and it had even been washed up according to some sources. So at this time, he's clearly panicking. He's already, the daughter was already crying because that was where the mom preaches. And they could not just imagine it be anyone else. They probably would hope it was someone else or just not their mom, but they weren't sure. Even at the time the girl was crying, even people who saw the man and the child standing by the spot, they were already looking at them, feeling bad for them, because they could tell that the woman may have been his wife. And in a bid to console the daughter, it was said Elijah told the daughter to stop crying that they've not confirmed it yet. Very hopeful, I must say. Just as they were talking, he spotted a policeman around the area who confirms to him that a woman had been killed and directed them to the police station they would go to. And then he drove with his daughter to the station. And when they got to the station, he was trying to get information, trying to find out about the woman that that was killed and if they could identify her to him you know just to make sure it's not his wife and while he was talking with the police the little girl spotted a body covered at the back of a packed van in the police compound and without even looking further she saw a piece of clothes and recognized the clothes to be her mother's clothes and that was when she burst into tears and and at this point, that's how the man figured that his wife was indeed the woman who everyone has been saying was killed in Bwari area. Mr. Elisha could not contain himself. He cried. There are pictures of him on the internet. You could see this man really in pain. And that was it. Knowing this now, what was left to do was to find the people who did it. And it did not waste time for Mr. Elijah to tell the police that this was what his wife had three weeks ago about how an imam claimed he didn't like her preaching. And now that that statement has gotten to this point where this woman has been killed, it does seem like that may have been a threat. It's also possible that they even said more. Because when I did hear the story, I only heard the imam said, I don't like what this one is preaching. I feel the man probably said more. I feel like Eunice heard more things. I feel like there were more things that may have been said to even make her quit for a week. Because that word alone, like I said, may not have been enough. But if that was all was said, it's still enough to raise an eyebrow. The death of Miss Eunice Olawale was a very horrible, tragic story that broke the internet. A lot of people were mad. A lot of believers knew that this was not an attack on a woman because she's a woman. This was an attack on a Christian because she was preaching the gospel. And so there was a lot of protests. There were people on the street protesting because hearing the story of how an imam said he did not like her preaching, a lot of people just connected the dots and knew that this was an Islamic extremist attack. This was Islamic extremism. And in the course of the investigation, the so-called imam was traced and he was arrested. The other clerics were arrested and about six of them were arrested. However, just like we've seen in a lot of Islamic extremist cases that have happened in Nigeria, these people never get tried. These people never get persecuted. They always know who do these things. But at the end of the day, they are let go. We've seen it in many numerous Islamic extremist cases that even Islams themselves, even people who are of the faith, even other Muslims are calling for justice, but still somehow it doesn't exactly come to fruition. After these six people were arrested, four were immediately released due to lack of evidence, obviously, or even knowing about the incident. Only two were close to the incident. Only two knew what may probably may have happened. Only two people were the most likely and possible suspects. Even though no one saw anything, they were the ones, according to investigation, that may have done it. But there was still not enough evidence to hold them down and persecute them. And somehow, while they were in prison, after a while, due to lack of persecution, they were let go. Many human rights lawyers came into this. A lot of organizations spoke up. Even these got to the international media and still there was nothing that could be done. It was almost like the people who killed this woman were protected by a higher power. 
because I don't understand how no one was found liable and held responsible for the killing of this woman. The story of Mrs. Eunice Olawale is one that breaks hearts and will continue to cause traumas in everybody who is closely related to this incident. What is more painful is the fact that she may not get her justice. Of course, yes, justice would come in the karma of the world, but it would have been a lot easier to find someone and hold the person responsible or have the person come out and confess their truth and take responsibility for the death of this woman because this was unprovoked, this was bullying, and this was clearly an extremist attack. It's been eight years and it's going to keep going on and her story will only be a story for the years. Hopefully it's a story that we will not ignore whenever we see it. Hopefully it's a story that we will keep sharing and keep talking about and keep reminding ourselves that there was a woman who got killed because she was preaching the gospel and may her soul rest in peace. However, those people who caused her death may most likely never know peace. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts regarding the story. Don't forget to comment where you're watching from. Like this video, share with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, do well to subscribe. You could also turn on the bell button so that you will get notifications should there be any new videos. Thank you for watching.